Hi folks and welcome to this video about Norman McCaig's poem Brooklyn Cop, which is part of the National Five Scottish set text. So, first of all, let's have a quick read of the poem. Brooklyn Cop, built like a gorilla but less timid, thick-fleshed, steak-coloured, with two hieroglyphs in his face that mean trouble. He walks the sidewalk and the thin tissue over violence. This morning when he said, see you babe, to his wife, he hoped it. He truly hoped it. He is a gorilla to whom hiya honey is no cliche. Should the tissue tear, should he plunge through into violence? What clubbings, what gunshots between Phoebe's Wamburger and Louis's place? Who would be him, gorilla with a nightstick? whose home is a place he might this time never get back to? And who would be, who have to be, his victims? An old favourite, I'm sure you'll agree. Now, the purpose of this video is something for you to watch to help with your revision. You might watch it the day before an assessment where you know you're going to be doing Brooklyn Cop. You might watch it in the week or the day before you do a set text assessment where you're not sure what the poem is, but you want to revise Brooklyn Cop and get it clear in your head. I'm not going to go over every annotation that your teacher has done with you. I'm just going to talk about the key things, the most important things that I want you to remember in advance of writing about it. So with that in mind, let's move on to some background notes. So this poem describes a stereotypical American cop, big, tough, thick, insensitive, a brutish, unfeeling character. However, the cop is a human. He has human hopes. He's got human fears. Every day he risks being caught up in the local violence in the streets of Brooklyn. This violence sounds like it's going to turn pretty nasty sometimes. Every day he puts his life on the line. His desire to get back home to his wife is on the line. Everything's at risk. The poet asks, would we do this job? McKay goes, met a cop like this and wondered, how does he do this? Could I do it? Could, could any of us do it? McKay also suggests that the cop wants to get back to his home and, and his wife so badly that maybe he'll shoot first and ask questions later. He's so skittish on the job that maybe innocent victims might, might end up dying because he's just so worried about something happening to him. McKay asks us to think about who watches the people who watch over us. Now we're going to get into stanza one. Like I said, I'm not going to go over absolutely everything, but I'm going to go over some of the key things, right? Built like a gorilla but less timid. We've got a simile here, an opening simile that appeals to our sense of sight, suggesting the cop is thick set, muscular, ugly, solid. Gorillas are fierce and powerful, but by comparison to the cop, timid? Evoking this image of ferocity and strength behind this police officer. He's tough, fearsome, territorial, uncivilized, intimidating. Just as a gorilla has the potential for danger and violence, so too does this police officer. He will challenge danger in the dark streets of New York City. This concrete jungle where weight and power dominate. In this concrete jungle, it's survival of the fittest, kill or be killed, just like it is in the traditional jungle. There is no room for weakness. Next up, thick-fleshed, steak-coloured. Again, our, our sight has been used to suggest what the cop looks like. He's got an imposing, tough appearance. Steak, raw steak being used to describe the colour of his skin. It's something primitive. This raw meat brings us back to the gorilla idea as well. It's about violence, blood, savagery. He has a, a raw, instinctively dominant nature. He's thick-skinned because he also has to withstand all the abuse that he gets on a daily basis. So... Not only the physical abuse, but maybe the verbal abuse that he experiences as well. And maybe because he's been outside all day, he has a, a ruddy complexion. His skin looks like a raw bit of meat because the outside world has been so unkind to him. Next up, this metaphor. With two hieroglyphs in his face that mean trouble. Just as hieroglyphs are foreign, a language that's difficult for us to read and understand, so too are the facial expressions, and in particular, the eyes of the cop. They're hard to decipher, and there's no obvious emotion that we can read there apart from trouble. So it continues this idea that he's got a tough exterior, and it raises the question about whether the cop represents law and order or violence. There's no place for emotion in this cop's work. Any sign of weakness could be exploited. It could be dangerous to him if they 
if they can read him too easily. So he's a cold and calculating person now. That's the persona that he's adopted because that's what he has to do to deal with the realities of this very difficult life. It can be daunting and frightening for people, especially McCaig, apparently, when he when he saw a cop like this. He's a hard character, a cold character, no warmth or compassion. The old saying goes that windows are the eyes to the soul, that you can tell how someone really feels by looking at their eyes. We can't tell that with this guy. These hieroglyphs are unreadable. His eyes are unreadable. We don't know what's going on, but we sense that there's going to be some trouble. The metaphor here, he walks the sidewalk and the thin tissue over violence. Just as the sidewalk is tough, cold, made of strong concrete, so too is the cop's attitude to his job, hard, emotionless. And this is juxtaposed with the thin tissue, contrasted with the thin tissue. Tissue is fragile, delicate, easily torn and ripped. And so too is the peace, the sense of peace in this city. At any moment, violence could break out. And that is reinforced by the enjambment of the word tissue. The poet also contrasts light and dark with the white tissue and the dark cop from earlier on in the poem. This links the theme of good and evil to the poem. Is this cop a good guy? Is he a bad guy? It's hard to tell. It also links to the idea that chaos is inevitable in a city that balances on a knife edge, especially at night. It's a very negative tone that McCaig creates here. The task of the cop is to patrol the streets of Brooklyn, which brings a sense of empathy from us because it's introduced, this is a dangerous job. He doesn't have the protective shield of a police car or the safety in numbers. He He's walking in isolation. He's lonely walking around these streets, facing this thin tissue, this potential eruption of violence at any moment. And again, McCaig is now appealing to a sense of touch. Before it was sight, but now touch it makes us almost feel the safety of the cop, this precarious safety. The sidewalk is referred to as a thin tissue over violence. It reminds us that at any moment, civilised behaviour may be replaced by dangerous violence because humanity, in McCaig's mind, will always give in to its baser instinct of violence. The thin tissue, you can almost feel how thin and how delicate it is when you hear that phrase. This morning, when he said, see you, babe, to his wife, he hoped it. He truly hoped it. We've got repetition here, a cliche, a tender moment between the cop and his wife described through direct speech. It suggests he takes a huge risk in his job, and he'll never know if he'll survive the day or not. He hopes he will. McCaig evokes sympathy for this man who seems to live his life on a knife's edge, but it also introduces a humanising aspect in the figure of this cop. He's now also a husband. He has tenderness. He's got humanity now, and it's introduced through this colloquial, very casual, informal phrase that he uses not to worry her. The fact that he might not return home is emphasised by the repetition of hoped it, and the reality of his situation is reinforced by the use of truly. So see you, babe, is a cliche. It doesn't really show his true emotions because he shuts those off in order to do his job. We don't get to see the humanity or any depth to the wife. This is all deliberate to show the emotional impact of his job. It is ironic the only names in the poem are names of businesses rather than people. The cop and his wife are deliberately nameless. It makes them seem less emotional, like the job he has to perform. The simple overused statement shows genuine emotion when he says hope, though, and it shows the dangerous nature of his job, that he realises the risks he takes. He still has a family to think about. So when he says, see you, babe, he's not just saying goodbye in that casual way that we all say goodbye. Behind that, behind this cliched phrase is something that he really means. He's genuinely worried that he might not see her. He is a gorilla to whom higher honey is no cliche. So the simile earlier has now changed into a definite and certain metaphor that repeats the idea of the gorilla. So instead of being like a gorilla, he's now one completely. Perhaps because of the dehumanising aspects of his job. This suggests a similar picture of the brutish, dark heart of this cop who has no emotion. The poet is now certain of the cop's true nature. Despite the gentler side with his wife, we come straight back to this idea that he's this brutish animal. Hiya honey links with see you babe. It's a cliche. The cop becomes something of a sympathetic figure again due to his simplistic, if very genuine emotion. There's no stability in his life, no guarantees. So when he says, hiya, honey, he says it with genuine feeling and relief 
and gratitude that he has survived another day. Then we've got stanza two. Should the tissue tear, should he plunge through into violence? And then there's a reference to Phoebe's Wamburger in Louis's place. The fragile piece can break very easily. The word choice of tear is violent and destructive. Plunge also suggests an aggressive, rapid movement downwards. Unexpected, fast. It shows how quickly something can happen on these streets. The theme of the delicate balance between civilization and savagery is repeated and emphasised with the use of the word plunge to indicate just how precarious and dangerous his position is, suggesting speed, destruction, when he moves from safety to a place of danger and violence. Plunge even has connotations of drowning, carries with it a sense of hopelessness, powerlessness against an unstoppable force. In this case, it's not water, it's the violence of New York City. He creates this savage, threatening picture of New York, and to show this uncertainty, McCaig opens the verse with an inversion using this incomplete question to demonstrate his point. The possibility that this could happen is emphasised by that repetition of should as well in the first line of the verse. And the idea is further emphasised by the progression of the violence from the unknown general feeling of violence to then clubbings, gunshots. There's a chilling impersonality about it. We don't know who's been attacked. It's just another accepted product of this corrupt society where the jungle rules are important. Those are the rules that reign. The, these words create this vivid, violent image appealing to the senses of touch and sound, while the establishment names bring to mind these garish, cosmopolitan sides to New York. There's even the violent connotation with the use of wham burger. And Louis' place has connotations of gangsters, a mafia hangout, somewhere where these stereotypical villains from old gangster movies would hang out and at this point we are once again intensely sympathetic for the cop and the plight that he goes through and there's little doubt that McCaig hates the urban violence of big cities like New York City remember this is quite a good connection to hotel room 12th floor he hates these big cities and how violent they can be the juxtaposition of the violence and the places of business is there as well the desperate concentration on personal wealth and materialism fuels the growing divide between the rich and the poor, which means more and more desperate people are turning to crime as a way out of their hopeless situation. That's some good stuff to link into Hotel Room 12 floor. Next up, who would be him, gorilla with a nightstick, whose home is a place he might this time never get back to? Some metaphor in there, bit of a rhetorical question. Who would be him? Who would want to be this guy who can't show his personality and his feelings? This gorilla with a nightstick, this inhuman, animalistic, aggressive person who has to force order with weapons. Nobody would want to be characterised this way. The metaphor gorilla with a nightstick establishes him as an animal with authority, nightstick being a symbol of American policing. Word choice home is both literal, the cop's life, his place in civilised society, but also metaphorical. Is it the cop's humanity itself? This emphasises not only the dangerous nature of the cop and his job, but also returns once again to the delicate balance explored earlier. The rhetorical question suggests in the speaker's sense of awe and maybe even frightened wonder at this situation. McCaig moves from description to reflection in the final two stanzas of the poem. In the first of these stanzas, he asks society to consider the reality of the cop's position. We're left with a question to ponder, who would be him? This is a deliberate move to evoke further sympathy for the cop, as we're forced to imagine ourselves in his situation. In the metaphor, Gorilla with a Nightstick McCaig brings to mind the image of an animal on the rampage in the nighttime jungle, but there is also the feeling that he needed the stick for self-defence. Again, we're reminded of the uncertainty of getting home with the words this time, to underline the immediacy and the reality of the threat in parenthesis there. Each shift is an unknown quantity where anything might happen. However, the poet doesn't end here, so... Home could be seen as a metaphor for himself and his personality and the fact that his, his self is gradually disappearing. He's becoming emotionally empty. He's becoming isolated from society, isolated from himself, isolated from his family because of this job that he has to do. There's a lot going on there. And who would be, who have to be his victims right at the end of the poem? So we've got some unusual word order here. It's quite striking. It causes you to pause and consider the question. 
almost like a wee road bump, who have to be, who would be, who have to be his victims. The word choice of victims is very pessimistic. The view of the cop and his role in society, suggesting that the people that he deals with become victims of his violence. Criminals seem to be the innocent, helpless subjects of the cop's animalistic, brutal duty here. This is possibly a comment on society itself and the contradictory way it suppresses violence with more violence. The question addresses a metaphysical idea. The subject of the poem is not the cop himself, described in the opening stanza, but the division between civilization and savagery. McKay poses another question. Who would be who have to be his victims? This adds an entirely new dimension to the poem, turning our attention to the other side of the law and forces us now to place ourselves in the place of the criminal. The word victim suggests that McKay sees the criminal as victims of circumstance, caught in a trap of poverty and despair, a product of a corrupt and unfair society where some people have no choice but to be criminals due to things out with their control. And in his place as a representative of that unfair society, the cop himself victimises them further. So we've got unusual word order. The syntax is unusual. It causes you to think, reflect upon the meaning. Who are these victims? Why would you want to be one of his victims? A hopeless tone, a fearful tone. Why does there have to be victims? Because the violence is inherent in society. McKay thinks, just can't escape it. His sentences and stanzas become shorter the further we go on. Things become more condensed. It's reflecting the reader, grasping at all these different ideas, perhaps becoming lost. We're not even focusing on the cop anymore. Everything's becoming a bit more fragmented, a bit more uncertain. Hope is disappearing. No more references to family and loved ones. So it ends in a very, very pessimistic tone at the end of the poem. And we can see with this neat little cartoon that I found on Google Images, an idea that there's two sides to this cop. He might see people differently depending on what side of his personality he's reflecting. So now have a wee look on BBC Bite Size for Brooklyn Cop questions. Maybe your teacher's given you some set text practice questions. Go back and have a look at your own annotations. I didn't cover everything in this video. I just covered some of the main quotes, some of the main ideas, some of the things to think about when you're studying and revising Brooklyn Cop.